Is this $100 EVU laptop any good? Let's tear it down and find out. This EVU laptop comes with 4 gigs of memory and only 32 gigs of storage. That's incredibly low for a Windows laptop, but it does come with a 1080p resolution screen. It has a variety of ports and a 4600 milliamp battery. Opening it up, I see the packaging is very simple and does a fine enough job of protecting the laptop. Inside is a 12 volt custom charger and an instruction booklet. Before opening the box, I noticed it was very sturdy and wouldn't have any problems being shipped around. Now looking at the laptop itself, I noticed it was actually pretty well built, especially at a $100 price range. There was no major flaws in the front or the back and the hinge seemed sturdy enough. Now on the left side, you have three ports. There's a charger, the USB 3, and a mini HDMI. Mini HDMI is fairly rare, so make sure you get the right adapter if you're plugging into a TV. The speakers are located on the underside, and there are no other apparent vents. On the right side is a micro SD slot, a USB 2.0, and a headphone jack. The outside seemed to be mostly made of plastic and weighed just over two pounds. When opening it up, the first thing you'll notice is this THX card. This shows that the display has been tuned to meet the standards for this certification. What that really means, I don't know. Next up is the keyboard. It's a standard QWERTY keyboard without the number pad, but that's expected for an 11 inch laptop. The keys themselves were actually very sturdy and I had a very good experience typing. Overall, it's a very good keyboard and should be great writing papers or emails. The mouse trackpad seemed to work just fine. There's no give on the top. The bottom corners do click and would be your left and right mouse functions. Now looking at the screen hardware, the hinge seemed to be sturdy and there were no apparent pressure points that could cause the hinge to break. It is an 11.6 inch screen with 1080p resolution and we'll look at the quality of the screen itself in a moment. All right, after reviewing the outside, let's flip it over and tear it down. Today, I'm gonna go with these Tekton toolkits. I usually use bona fide hardware, but I was lending them out to a friend. Take out the screws around the outside to remove the back panel. The one with the white is the factory seal, so if it's been tampered with, it voids the warranty. But Honey Badger doesn't care about warranties. I had to remove the rest of the screws with some tweezers, and I use an anti-static mat like this that has a magnetic head to save the screws. Mats like these can be a lifesaver to organize screws on a teardown. Next, I use a non-marking spudger to remove the back panel. The back plate itself is made of plastic and has a silver heatsink tape. Looking at the internals, I need to remove this black anti-static tape to get to the guts of the computer. Let's take a look at the internals now. The speakers are on the bottom corner. The cable to the external ports feeds through here. Motherboard gets power through this, the keyboard, and the mouse trackpad. This ribbon cable feeds the display. This black wire is an antenna for Wi-Fi, so this device does have wireless internet. Now I'm taking off the ribbon cables to get a better look at the motherboard. I carefully pull these out by lifting up the black latch and sliding out the ribbon cable. I can't yet remove all the ribbon cables, so I need to remove these three screws first. I tried to pull out the motherboard, but it was still stuck down, so something tells me there's another screw somewhere. I decided to remove the battery next by taking out these five screws around it. You usually want to remove the battery first to avoid any electric shock. This is a 4600 milliamp battery with an 8.4 max voltage. With that removed, I'm able to detach the rest of the ribbon cables. Now these are fragile, so be careful taking them out. Now I'm removing this copper plate, which is a heat sink for the CPU. There was some thermal insulation tape underneath, but no paste. Now let's take a look at the motherboard. The first thing that stands out is I don't see any expansion bays. I removed the final screw and flipped it over. Underneath the motherboard is just anti-static material. The RAM must be soldered on and there are no slots for an M.2 drive. That was expected, but very unfortunate as this would be an amazing bargain to have the ability to expand RAM memory and storage. The only way to expand storage is to use a micro SD card or an external drive through the USB ports. Not the preferred option, but that's understandable as this only costs $90. I'm gonna speed things up. Just remember to put things back together the way you found it. All right, with that put back together, I'm gonna put the screws in around the outside, seal it down, and power it up.
The first time boot sequence did take a lot longer than I'm showing here, it took about 45 seconds. I didn't boot into the BIOS, it went straight into the Windows setup. Now to pay it forward, while doing this project I listened to Business Wars by Wondery, fantastic podcast on business competition. I'm not sponsored, I just like to share out good podcasts and things that I listen to. I also didn't have anything to talk about while this booted up. Regardless, go check it out and leave a comment on other good ones. All right, when the computer starts up, you're taken out to this Windows Edge screen. With the browser already open, I decided to download a few photos to test out the screen quality. I will mention that the first reaction to simple web browsing was great. I had no performance issues, but I would expect it to slow down immensely with more tabs open. Now with a few photos downloaded, let's take a look at the screen. And I will say for a $90 laptop, it looks awesome. Very impressed to have a 1080p screen in this price range. There's good color clarity. There is some reflection from the screen, but I do have pretty intense light shining on it. So it'd be less reflective in a darker setting. It has good viewing angles and a 60 Hertz refresh rate. If I were to compare it with the older MacBook Air, this really does blow it out of the water. After reviewing the screen, I decided to review its performance next. I went to go download some screen capturing software called OBS, but quickly realized I was not able to install it. OBS is a highly used capturing program, so I was a little confused why it wouldn't install. I then attempted to open the command prompt, but was blocked with this error message. It states that this mode of Windows only runs verified apps from the App Store. What that means is the only programs that will run are those that are installed already on the computer, or you have to go to the Microsoft Store itself and download them. That's because this is running what's called Windows S, and it's different than traditional Windows. Similar to an iPhone, you can only install things that are available on the App Store. It gives more protection to the computer, but less freedom. It appears that the intended audience are students, or children, or perhaps businesses that want to limit what people can do on their laptops. You can switch to regular Windows, but would have to give up those restrictions. Moving on, the biggest critique of the laptop is the storage. It has 32 gigs, but only 8.9 is available. If you are only going to be writing reports or Word documents, or perhaps browsing your email, then this should be fine. You'll likely have to delete occasional files, and any photos or videos will need to be saved on an external device. Think of this computer more as a phone that runs apps as opposed to a traditional computer that stores files and processes information. Alright moving on, let's test out the performance of this machine. Because I couldn't download any benchmark software, I decided to open up several office applications and check the CPU usage. It often peaked at 100% and would fluctuate as things were opened up. Although it showed 100%, I didn't notice any lag. That is, until I started to open up more RAM intensive tasks. I opened up the browser and went to YouTube to watch some of my videos. Scrolling through, I had no problems, but there was some lag as I tried to go full screen. Keep in mind, I do have several Office programs open, but this should be the standard as most people have several applications open at once. Switching over to look at the usage, it's at 100% full time, and the RAM is above 70%. With that said, there was really no lag as I went throughout my tasks, but we'd want to be careful so the computer doesn't overheat. So my final thoughts are, I'm very surprised at how well this $100 Walmart computer did. I thought it would be absolutely terrible, but changed my mind after using it. It's intended for a young student or child, has a good screen, battery life, and keyboard, but counter that with low storage and heavy CPU usage. You won't be running any games on this, but hopefully this video helps you understand the pros and cons. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day.